session on the SDN and PC controllers. So our next topic is uh, is about eVPN. And happy to see that Patrice is going to start with some use cases of why we're going to actually start deploying this eVPN services, right? Patrice? Right. This is the famous clicker. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, hi everyone. I'm Patrice Brisset, I'm principal engineer, uh, EVPN architect at Cisco. So today, uh, what I want to present to you is a bit of our story of uh, what we've been uh, doing for the last few years. Um, last year here at the same time, we, we explained to you really well what we've been doing, like in details, what was about uh, EVPN, but I think this year it's, it, it's up to show how this is working. So the presentation will be made of three stages. The, uh, like, let's go through another quick overview of VPN. And then we're going to go through uh, our network fabric and why we call it this way and what this is about. And lastly, uh, more use cases related to that. So for me, VPN, I should add, I do have one slide to explain it. And I think that's the better picture I, I found so far. Um, for me, it's, 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 it's that tool. It can do pretty much everything. It can save your life. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's awesome, basically. When you're stuck in the wood, you want that also, right? So basically, EVPN can do uh, L3 application, uh, L2 application. It can do gateways, it can do RB. It works also for data center. It works for network fabric. It works for DCI. It's your common uh, overlay. Um, very good for virtualization. It works for video. So it works pretty much for everything. So our overlay that we are seeing is just use your made in VPN knife and you will survive that story. So basically, the next things I want to go is with the network fabric is what have we done here? So basically what we've been doing is we study and look very carefully about uh, the data center and what they were doing because those people are great actually. And there's a lot of uh, features or advantage that they've been doing and we decided to say, hmm, this is pretty cool. Service provider will like it. So we stole a bunch of them, we ran away with it, and we provided to you with that network fabric. Um, those requirements are mainly listed here, and we are talking about anything which is uh, multi-tenant. We, we talk about workload placement, uh, the optimal forwarding east-west traffic, north-south, uh, the bandwidth, and also for sure virtualization. But what is really, really different and why we don't call it data centers, because data center is, has more to this. It's like symmetric, everything is big, everything is perfect, everything is no latency, everything is CCMP. A service provider has a lot of different challenge. And when we look at this and say, hmm, EVPN can really, really, really help and also can really, really help doing those requirements that we stole in from the data center. So, Basically, EVPN is what? It's like, again, we have the, co the common control plane, L2, L3, RB. Um, we have multi-homing now. We can use it also for workload mobility, seamless VM motion, the fast convergence. You know it's also standardized uh, ITF, and also totally agnostic of your own delay. So VXLAN, the MPLS story, the SR, SRV, say. so EVPN can work over all that. So when we talk about network fabric, that's what pretty much this is. So you have the choice. If you're someone who really likes data center, please look at the left side of the screen. If you're a service provider and you prefer those topology, please, write, please read on the right side of the screen. So pretty much, and again, those, those pictures, by the way, are logical, are logical picture. You understand that. But what we are seeing is it's pretty much the same, right? A leaf is an access device. The spine was an aggregation. The border leaf is a P. So, but why we say that is because it's, it's what we are saying is what you've done is great. We bring a VPN, we build it as a network fabric, we stole the main feature from service provider, and we apply it there. But at the end, you can talk a language of, of a data center, or you can talk the language of the net service provider, the legacy topology. At the end, it's all the same that you're doing. So let's take one of those. Uh, let's take a, one of those network. People knows that, right? You've been doing this forever. So what we are saying is, oh, I have my core, I have the legacy aggregation and access. I want to bring new service. I don't want to take 18 months anymore. Um, I want to be able to um, spin a service very fast and move on 
spin out of the service very fast and move on. I don't want to just put big boxes and, okay, I'm gonna qualify it, qualify each service, and then I bring it, uh, the whole things up. It's too slow, it's too complex, it's not, it's, the reliability is, is always like a, a, good, a good story. So what we say is, no, 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 forget this, build a network fabric. And again, with a network fabric, what you're doing is you're taking pretty much your core and you're stretching it and you take your L3 VPN circuit and you push it down very, very, very close to your application. By doing that, it will give you a lot of advantages. So everything which is east-west will always become optimal. Everything, everything which is north-south is very, very also optimal. And then you can start building some computes. So therefore, you can do virtualization. So now, you look at your core and you say, oh, this is my core. It's very complex, very expensive. I have tons of appliances that are dying because they are out of life. I think the first question that you need to ask yourself, hmm, what do I do? Do I buy an, another, I don't know, half million device and put it again in my core, requalify my core, or maybe I should virtualize it? So therefore, since you are powered with eVPN that can do pretty much everything, so you just create an L2 tunnel down up to your computes and you virtualize them. And the beauty is, because it's a VPN, you can still do your routing because you have pushed anyway already a lot of routing towards your access. So the second step that you can, you're gonna start doing is say, oh, I have also all my legacy service. But because a fabric is very, very flexible, you can start moving one by one at your own pace for whenever you think it's you're gonna get the best, uh, the best money out of that move towards that fabric. And what's gonna happen is all your access, well, where I see is all the access now will go through those fabric to the core because anyway, the core has been stretched in those fabric. And you can do, oh, I can use that compute because yeah, that's right, I have it now. And keep moving up to your core and, and reach your destination. So, you keep moving that, you keep moving that, and what you get at the end, you get, oh, the pretty much the same picture as before, people say. You haven't changed anything, and that's why we say it's pretty much the same. However, now you have flexibility. If one of those access devices is failing, instead of having the entire um, network going down, only few services will get affected. And this is pretty neat for that. Or you want to bring on a new OLTs or new DSLAM or just new service or new BNG service, it's very easy. Just add a couple of more leads, bring it, layer three is there in a way, then you go routing, and then you go moving to your core, right? And all of that without changing your core because you can go at your own pace instead of reinventing your network, recreating a network. That is, in my opinion, is, 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 is not fun actually when you do that. So what VPN is really, what we are taking out from the VPN to be able to achieve that. So you, you're looking at distributed in cast gateways so we can push very, very close to your application, the, the L3 VPN. You can do seamless motion virtualization. You have all the multi homing of a VPN. We say all active, but we, you know that we have the single active, we have the part active, we have all those multi homing fancy features that you can imagine. So therefore, you don't need uh, MC lag, ICCP based um, protocol, so it's another protocol that is out. You're also gonna rely on symmetric RB, so again, no, you don't want to go back and forth within that fabric, so to reach a centralized gateway, no. Keep it very close to your application, this is where the action anyway is going, and start moving complexity towards the access, that's what you wanna do. So therefore, by doing those things, then you get all the advantages that we stole from the data center. So uh, seamless, mobility, the optimal forwarding, and again, uh, all active and blah, blah, blah. So now, the fabric, is, I think it's well covered. We're gonna talk about the access and how we apply those fabric. So again, you have your core in the middle. That's what you have today. You don't wanna touch that. You wanna stretch it. You wanna stretch it with flexibility. So we put fabric. I call it now metro fabric because that's not your core. <laughs> okay, as simple as that. So, and then you have the choice. You can keep the way it is because some people say, hey, don't touch my access yet, I'm not ready. So then, straight at the core, you can, and since those fabrics are VPN enabled, you can start bringing the legacy pseudo wire, right, remember. Target LDP pseudo wire, very, very hard. You need to spy the destination or BGPED. It depends on uh, what you've been running. 
And what you're doing is since I have a already a VPN, I push it there, I replace that technology, so you're removing more protocols, and down you can stream your point-to-point -point pseudo wire up to the PE to your core as you were doing before. So the, it's pretty much just replacing the actual um, services that you had. So, but that's one way. The other way is push it more. That's what we said. Take your L3 VPN and push it, push it out to your core because you want, in fact, adding more feature, adding more flexibility to what you're already doing without impacting what you have. So, so the other thing is, as you can see, the picture is pretty similar, but instead of bringing it to the core, and you can still do that for some service, you have also the choice to push it further. Or you can do both, it doesn't matter. EVPN will do it for you anyway, because it's very flexible. So, let's look at the access a bit. That's one way to bring your, to, to replace your target LTP pseudo wire, where you have one way pseudo wire with an NC, or two ways pseudo wire with an NC, very complex stuff. We replace it maybe by an NECAS pseudo wire. So this is how you're gonna do all active using pseudo wire. Or you can go with something more traditional way where you have EVP and VPWS, where you can do maybe all active or single active, you, carry, you cross it with pseudo wire, you bring it to your core or your metal fabric at the beginning of it, and you run your VPN there, maybe an L2 bridging because people were doing that, or maybe something more IRB because maybe you want to go right away into a layer three world um, because, um, so you can get up the, um, the optimal routing perspective from that angle. So this is another way to bring more access to you. The other way that also you can do it is you can use our super fancy construct, which is our flexible cross-connect service. Uh, that thing is pretty much doing a huge VLAN moxing into pseudo wire and bring again to your fabric where, where you can do pseudo wire hidden termination. You can do BNG if you want to. You can just cross it and carry on. The last one I think also we need to discuss is how you deal with L3 interface, right? Because Oh, it's easy when you run L2, you have everything, but you can also do use EVPN with what we call EV lag, so EVPN lag, and you can also um, manage all the multi-homing for your L3 services. That can be also possible. You can also remove VRP, by the way. Uh, VRP, HSRP is out of the picture now with EVPN. It's a very, very nice and easy way to take it out. So we remove a, one more protocol. So ICCP base, we talk about VRP now. We talk about all the target set of wires and the access. And yeah, you name it, you can keep moving on. So if we put all of that together, what we just explained today, where do we start? We start with your core, and you're gonna build, we're gonna build um, the fabric so you can start stretching it towards your access. So you put that fabric. So you, the fabric where you can provide computes, uh, and again, all what we stolen from data center. And also you, what you can do is you can now start looking at your access, right? So the aggregation, your backhole, all of that is a VPN-ish now. Or maybe why, why not creating more smaller fabric, right? Because you can create many of them since it's so flexible and you have maybe the different needs because that can be only for OLTs, you can have maybe another just for DSLAM, or you can just have one for multicast, or and you, can, and you can start playing with it. It's Lego, it's very, very simple uh, to connect that. So you connect all of that together with those border leaf, and now you get that new, generator, the new generation of network that you really want because you push everything, you take out complexity from the core, you can do virtualization, you have now computes that you didn't have before, your access has been taken care, and this is the network that I think we believe is the best that you can do with EVPN. So, so now, if you also know, everything, again, EVPN, don't touch the core, and lately, I will just switch the name because at the end, you've been doing this forever, right? It's just different protocol, different perspective, but now you have that flexibility. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's on time. Hear, it's perfect on time. Perfect. Time. Perfect. It's good to hear we have this new protocol which replaces everything else, and it's the Swiss Army knife. Right? Exactly. Good. And look at it. How it looks. I, I, that, I was just going to say that's why we can now all relax. Exactly. Fact. Okay. Thank cool. you. Thanks, Patrice. Thanks. So our next uh, next speaker up is uh, Gilles, right?